Om Shanti, greetings of peace to everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday evening talk hosted by the Wembley's Inner Space. My name is Elizabeth Padilla. I'm going to be your speaker tonight on the topic of attitude and vibrations change the world. My um, background is in music and the arts. I have education in classical music and um, acting. I've been a, um, a teacher and meditator of Raj Yoga meditation for the last 35 years. And I'm currently a resident at our Anabuti Meditation and Retreat Center uh, here in California, just north of San Francisco in the United States. So I'm very happy to share with you some of my insights and um, experiments um, with vibration and attitudes and how they can make a difference in how you see yourself and experience the world around you and make a difference. So first I'd like to take up this aspect of vibration. I've always been, um, uh, I guess, interested in the effect that vibrations have on the mind, on people, on matter. Um, it's something that's invisible, yet it has an effect. And as a musician and singer, I'm very much impressed by how just singing a few tones um, will um, inspire people or bring emotions or moods. Um, there's an old Greek philosophy, uh, ancient Greek philosophy, which states that astronomy and music are like two sides to the same coin. Astronomy is the science of observing external objects, whereas music allows us to observe the invisible, the hidden, objects that stir within our inner world. And so for me, music has not only inspired me, but it's also um, helped me to understand even more subtle frequencies. And that would be the vibrations and moods and memories. So our memories will also um, uh, store certain uh, vibrations to them and will create moods. Um, so in a way, music is a way of finding the big, invisible, moving pieces that are inside our hearts and soul and help us figure out the position of things that are inside us. So with astronomy, it's figuring out the position of the external world, and it almost mirrors what is happening in our internal world. So there's a different, there are different ways of picking up vibrations, and some vibrations can be heard with the ears. Some can be felt from the heart. Some can be measured with scientific instruments like the electroencephalogram. As a student of meditation, I've also noticed a profound effect that the qualities of peace and love and gratitude have made on me and on my relationship with others. They give a particular vibration and they can change your mood, your perspectives on the past, even on this present moment and also on how you will see your future. These qualities deeply affect our relationships. So how are vibrations created? It's an energy and it's born from something. 
so we can experience the effect of the vibrations on our body. So how is it that a particular piece of music can bring on the sensations that will either relax you or inspire you or invigorate you? Our bodies are like receptors and they're made mostly of water. Water is a big conducer of energy and vibration and sound. I remember um, an experiment that I made at one of my friends' uh, crystal gem shop. Her name is Luz Elena, and she has this beautiful, magnificent shop with uh, crystals and gems from around the world. And she had this one table with several uh, crystal bowls quite big, some were very big and some were small, these beautifully shaped crystal bowls and they were tuned to a note on the music scale. So they were musical instruments made out of crystal. But crystal is an, um, an amazing um, property. Um, like water, it's, it's crystal, um, it's a crystal formation and that it can vibrate and hold um, that tune. So I would flick the outside of the bowl and it would resonate. And it would resonate in the, the, the uh, note that it was um, designed for. And so there was one that was a C sharp and it would be this beautifully high pitched C sharp with some low resonance. And um, then I would click on my finger on the uh, bowl that was labeled A flat. And so I thought, let me try something. And I, I um, listened to the, the note of the C sharp and I went across the room, which is at least 15 feet away from the bowl. And with my voice, my human voice, I emitted a C sharp. And I just, you know, and then the bowl responded and resonated, but only the one that was C sharp. None of the other bowls replied or made any kind of sound. And then I listened for the A flat bowl and I went across the room again, but this time I did the A flat note and made the sound and that bowl responded. And the again, the other bowls did not respond. Only the note in which I was emitting from my voice into the atmosphere, that tone was picked up by the bowl that was designed to resonate at that frequency. So how I see these bowls is a metaphor to our own um, emotions and attitudes and vibrations that we store in our memories. And we too can give off these vibrations that will resonate off of other people that have uh, memories or attitudes that are similar to the frequency that I'm experiencing. For example, if I'm in a good mood, I will probably attract to me people who are vibrating with that same frequency. And I will find myself surrounded by relationships of people with a good mood. Or even if someone is has a, a bad mood, I could perhaps inspire that tone, that frequency of a good mood from that person if they stay in my company for a while. And the same would go if I was in a bad mood. I could even make a room that had pleasant vibrations become unpleasant because of my um, bad mood. And so our thoughts will create vibrations and our bodies are like these vessels that actually um, uh, would magnify 
the vibration and create an atmosphere in the room, in my relationships, and even how I see myself and experience my, my reality. So let's look at thoughts. If thoughts are what create vibrations, where do thoughts come from? And um, each thought that we generate that will generate this vibration and create our attitudes will create a perspective or reality. And if I stay in that vibration, then that's what I will manifest. That's the type of relationships that I will attract to me. There's sort of a serendipity that happens based on my attitude, on my vibration, on my um, perspectives, how I see things. And thoughts are very powerful. And not only can they um, fill the room in where you're sitting, but thoughts can also travel. Um, I remember a dear friend of mine, Charles, who is telling me of, of a story. Um, this is recent, uh, a story when he was in college, he had a, a, a roommate and became really good friends. They were really close, these, um, this friend of his. And at one point they became estranged. They um, had an argument, an upset, and were no longer talking to each other. And for decades went by. And one day he was remembering his friend and he thought to himself, I want to forgive my friend. I really want to let it go. And he just sent that vibration of forgiveness to his friend with a with lot of um, vibrations of love and an attitude of letting it go, um, of actually missing him. And of course, three days later, I say, of course, because I've heard this before, similar stories, but three days later, this friend whom he hadn't heard from in 20 years called him. And he said that three days ago, I was remembering you and I bursted into tears and his friend had to pull the car over. He was driving and remembering Charles. And for some reason he felt quite emotional and had to pull over and have a big cry. And then he called Charles and told him of his experience. And so how is it? They're in totally different uh, states. You know, they're hundreds of miles away from each other and haven't seen each other in 20 years. Yet they were able to pick up on these thoughts of forgiveness and reconciliation and love. And it's through the vibrations of thought. And by changing our perspective and attitude about what it means to have friendship. So um, I'd like for you to even think of um, someone that's been an inspiration in your life. Maybe someone who's inspired you to make a difference, a change in your life. Um, if you can think of that person and maybe somebody you know, or maybe it's a famous person, but you really admire this person. And just think of why, what are the qualities that you really appreciate in this person? Do you have the thoughts, the qualities? this person. And now when you think of this particular um, person that's inspired you, would you say that this person has never been um, a victim of their circumstances, that they were able to rise above their situation, that they were able to 
um, uh, no matter what their age, religion, gender, that they were able to um, perform um, the task in spite of whatever their given circumstances are. And so people like that inspire us, they motivate us, they make us realize that there's something more than what meets the eye, the physical eye. And that um, within us is this spiritual force, this conscious energy, which we call soul. And so this unlimited consciousness termed soul consciousness is when we're able to rise above and be an influencer. I have these vibrations that are quite subtle and they're emanating from a pure consciousness of being a radiant presence, a loving presence, a peaceful presence. Whereas those that have what I call victim consciousness and are hindered by the limitations around them, they're not good enough, they're not smart enough, they're not educated enough, they're not handsome enough, they're not wealthy enough. And so they never feel they're enough. And this is what we call limited consciousness or body consciousness. When we're totally identified to just these physical limitations, these givens. And so when we entertain thoughts, especially when we take time to be still and quiet and you know, muse on these thoughts that are based in soul consciousness. And these are the properties of the soul that are beyond physical limitations, such as love, peace, joy, truth, or, or embodied wisdom and purity, clarity, to see things as they are. These original qualities are like these crystal bowls and they resonate within each of us. Except it takes a little practice. We have to bring them out. We have to, to you know, bang on them and allow those frequencies to emanate. And we can um, use these bodies um, to you know, experience these qualities, to use this body as an instrument of love and peace and joy and clarity and purity. And this has been what's intrigued me with vibrations and um, and developing attitudes that are of gratitude, um, to pun the phrase. Um, uh, when I am look at whatever situation that comes my way, especially difficult ones, um, I know that it comes as a gift. It comes to, to lift the soul, to, to actually bring me to my potential. And whatever it is that I'm ready to um, face, to, to take the challenge, um, that's what will pop up for me. And immediately our go-to is this shouldn't be happening and we will resist. But, to, but if you're practicing the meditation, if you're taking that time out for yourself and getting to know these inner resonances, um, these crystallized experiences, qualities of the soul, then I will find 
the tools to overcome these situations very organically and naturally. I will find the people that will help me and cooperate in making a difference in the world. So how do we develop our potential? I think we agree that in order to change the external world, I need to change my internal world. And now I know that everything begins with a thought and our thoughts give vibrations, which create our attitudes and our attitudes will create how we see the world, our perceptions, and they will in turn create our actions. There isn't any action that I perform that isn't preceded by a thought. Can you think of anything that you do or have done that didn't begin with a thought? Or colored our action? Even our heartbeat is colored by our thoughts, right? Whether we have high blood pressure or low blood pressure, even how we breathe, right? So our thoughts have a, a psychosomatic effect on our bodies. And every action I perform will leave a memory, an impression. And our mind derives most of its thoughts from the past, from these past experiences that are stored. Only 10% of our thinking is conscious, where we're awake. So let's take a look at the effect that our thoughts have on the brain. And so let me just show you a slide real quick. So this is a graph of five different types of brain waves. And as you can see to the side, uh, there it's showing how um, active the brain wave is and how tight it is. And gamma is a very focused state, a very concentrated peak performance state. Beta is when we're awake and aware and alert. Alpha, you can see the brain wave begins to relax and it has a, a, actually a greater amplitude, whereas the, the gamma is tighter and, and it, it doesn't extend as far. But as we get more relaxed, as in the alpha, it, it, it is relaxed and open. And then in theta, it's a meditative state or a, a deep relaxation. And then in deep dreamless sleep is what is known as delta. And some meditators can reach a delta state. It's known that our innate quotient, our IQ is heightened when we are in a calm state. And children from the ages of one to seven uh, are found to have uh, states of theta because it's more receptive. They're, they take a lot of information by the environment around them. And so those are their volatile years that create their personalities, how they see the world, and so on. Now, Daddy Junkie is pictured here in 1978 when a group of scientists um, at a research institute at the University of Texas examined Daddy Junkie's brain. And she stayed in a meditative state, a delta state, even while performing actions, uh, math equations, um, uh, exercises. And 
when they did this test again in Texas, in uh, sorry, in San Francisco, um, I was talking to one of the scientists who had performed this test with her and they thought that their machinery was broken because no human being has ever done this before. So they asked her to come back and they would examine their machines and fix them. And when she came back, she had the same results that she was able to maintain these uh, slower brain waves with higher amplitude, um, which was uh, a depth and clarity and um, while performing actions, they even tried to agitate her, but she remained calm. And so they gave her the title of the most stable mind in the world. And I love this quote by Daddy Junkie. If you want to change your behavior, focus on the thinking which causes it. Thoughts are like seeds and from them grow your attitudes and in turn, your actions. Now we can see that each and every thought has so much potential each and every thought can create a world. We must process 30 to 60,000 thoughts in a day. How many of those thoughts am I aware of? And of those that I'm aware of, how many of those can I change? How can I empower those positive thoughts and discard the negative ones. First, I need to create an atmosphere that's conducive for those positive thoughts to organically grow. Just as if you had a dark and damp room, the mold spores would begin to grow. Just like negative thoughts, if I have a dark and damp, stale thoughts, then those negative thoughts will begin to fester and multiply and grow. But if I have an atmosphere that's filled with sunshine and light and warmth, it's impossible for those mold spores to grow. So we need to develop a higher frequency, a, a subtle, tranquil environment that naturally allows our positive seeds of thought to germinate and grow. This is how we develop our potential. Meditation is a way to create that positive environment and to empower the soul. The first step in bringing that meditation process into life is to accept. Even if I sit down for a meditation, the first thing I need to do is to accept everything as it is. I can only change me. So I also need to accept my own thoughts and where I'm at right now. Then, in my meditation, I can begin to let go and be attuned to a higher frequency, a divine vibration, that vibration of the Supreme Being, of God, or whatever that divine reference is for you so that by contemplating on that source of pure energy, I'll, it'll empower my thoughts. I'm not alone in this process. And that divine reference never deviates from itself. It maintains a continuum and is self-empowered to an extent that I can take as much as I want from this source of 
high frequency energy. And then next, I need to have a sense of purpose. What is my aim? What do I want? This is where I can be really creative. What does my full potential look like? What change do I want to see in myself? And even beginning that process, I'll learn that my sense of purpose will mature and develop and grow. And then I'll gain new insights. I'll have new perspectives. And there'll be things that you never even knew about yourself. You didn't even think you, you could do, do such things. And you'll be inspired. And then to let go is another step to release. You know, every step of the way, our relationship to this world is that of constant change. But what we want to do is have inspired change. And so my relationship to this world has to be that of allowing that which is meant to happen. What I'm trying to say is that we have to go with the flow sometimes. Just like, you know, a trapeze artist, if you've ever seen a trapeze artist, they're up on a, you know, in the, in the circus you will see, they're, they're up on a high pedestal and they put their hands on this swing, which is called a trapeze, and at the other end, a, tra a, a trapeze is released, and this artist will jump off that pedestal and meet the next swing or the next trapeze. And once they let go, the key is let go of that trapeze, they're in a suspended state. And then they're able to move on and grab the next trapeze. And I like this metaphor of transition. Whenever we're in a transition, this is a moment of opportunity. When I am no longer holding on to the old way of doing something or being something, and I haven't yet reached the next step, but I'm in this suspended place. And it's exciting, invigorating, and also it can be terrifying. And this is that change moment. This is that transition moment. And I have to be willing to let go before I can move on. And I call this the ah moment. And it can be a, a moment of wonderment because I realize I'm neither this nor that. I am just pure consciousness, and I'm in that wonderment of awe. But if I resist, if I fight it, then instead of awe, it'll be ah. <laughs> I'll find myself in a state of brokenness, and they call it the dark night of the soul, which can also be amended but that resistance to to change so it means that i have to be willing to let go of the old before i can embrace the new and then i can evolve and empower myself and this is that spiritual process of yes i have that potential within me but how do i exercise that how do i develop that and again, it's having that acceptance, that surrender to a higher frequency to then gain uh, insights so that I can let go of the old and then evolve and empower myself. So I hope you found this helpful and um, it certainly has helped me on my journey. And I'd like to share with you 
a song as a meditation and it would be um, advantageous for you to just sit back and take in the sounds and the tone and the attitude and vibrations and the intention behind the song to allow you to be in a meditative state so that you can accept and embrace and allow and allow that change from within so that I can begin to change the world around me.
शांति की शक्ति से पत्थर भी होता मो द पावर ऑफ होम शांति कैन मेल्ट द हार्डेस्ट And now I have uh, a special song for you. It's another opportunity for a meditation. And you will hear the sound of the ocean and see some beautiful scenery of the California coast. And just allow each wave to calm the mind and allow the self to be awake and aware I am a peaceful radiant presence I have so much potential and in the stillness when I allow the mind to become calm. I can see things as they are. And to allow a connection with the Supreme Being. a divine empowering relationship with God
wanna see you in the morning sun. I wanna see you when the day is done. I thought you left me. Yes, I was sure. No, I. In a dream, or so it seems, and left me wondering if it was really you. I only know one thing: as I approach the golden stairs, I'm prepared to take the steps that lead me to. Prepare. 